Hello there, I'm Eric Babb. I'm going to be presenting my uh, poster on an investigation of protein expression of Rhizopus oryzae biofilms. Um, so Rhizopus oryzae is a type of mold, a fungus mold, that is common in uh, certain infections called mucormycosis. Now mucormycosis is an infection of the face and one of the methods that is used to treat this is amp using amphotericin B or amp B. Now amp B is toxic to us, to, uh, toxic to us as humans in high amounts. And I, which is understandable since we're eukaryotic cells just like fungal cells. And so they're, they're targeting similar, uh, they have similar targets between them. One of the problems is that when Rhizopus orzia forms a biofilm, it makes it incredibly difficult for AMP B to be able to enter in and kill the fungal cells, which means that we need to increase the amount of AMP B that we put in, thus putting the patient more at risk. Now, a, an individual and a UVU uh, identified that there is that shockwave therapy is an effective way to be able to open to be able to break open the fungal biofilms or biofilms in general but this only has a limited time because they will start to re uh, try to reform and again we run into the same problem and so the, our goal of the project overall project is to identify proteins that are essential in the uh, reformation of the biofilm to be another target on top of AMP to make the AMP more effective, to have it last longer inside of the system so that we only have to give so much to the patient. For what this poster discuss, uh, discusses, this is only a snapshot of what we are doing, uh, is to identify a method that we can uh, use that would produce the largest amount of biofilm proteins for the rezo uh, or orzia. Rhizopus orzia. Now, we had two methods that, that we started off with, the Toyofuka method and the Latif method. The Toyofuka originally was for bacterial uh, bacterial biofilms, and the Latif method was for uh, fungal biofilms, but we used both to compare uh, and contrast between the two. The Toyofuka method, fairly simple. We first uh, ran, uh, put the uh, everything that would that were growing in the biofilms through a filter, then took took the biofilm and centrifuged it in 0.9% sodium chloride. We did that for 30 minutes at uh, uh, 15,000 Gs at four degrees Celsius, and then we ran that through another filter and collected uh, the the runoff, which hopefully was the proteins. With the Latif method. We centrifuged that 10,000 Gs for four minutes, and then we took the biofilm and put that into a container with, ED, uh, with 10 millimoles of EDTA. And we let that uh, rock on a, a rocker for uh, two hours at four degrees Celsius, and then we centrifuged it again and obtained what was on uh, the supernatant. When we then took samples of that, and ran it through a Bradford assay. Uh, and going against a BSA standard, we found that the Toyofuka method was much more successful at getting proteins out. Uh, the Latif method, if you look at the, the graph that's on the poster, it was not successful at all. Um, in our conclusions, we tied uh, possible reasons for that might have been that. Calcium, which uh, calcium is not as used uh, for cell-to-cell -cell adhesion, which EDTA is you uh, will take up calcium and chelate it, change the uh, the charge on it so that it's less useful in different uh, different methods, in different processes. And so, knowing that the Toyofuka method was better. Uh, we planned on continuing on with this project using that one and uh, yeah, continue, uh, continue on with it. Uh, our goals are to 
further uh, optimize it and then to compare uh, to look for specific proteins that are going to be found only intracellularly to uh, make sure that we are getting extracellular proteins and not intracellular ones also. And then another goal, uh, one of the ways that we're going to plan on doing that is using 2D gel electrophoresis. And then we can uh, use, uh, look for specific weights and charges to be able to identify if any of the ones that we have there are, are them. Thank you.